Hello, today we will look at the study by the famous study composer Nikolai Dmitrievich Grigoriev. He was born in 1895 and died in 1938, unfortunately after an operation for appendicitis. Grigoriev was also a very good chess player. In the USSR Championship 1920, he was placed fifth. He's also famous for a game he played against Alexander Alikain, where they got five queens on the board, and that is very, very rare. This study is from 1932. Grigoria was a specialist in pawn endings probably the greatest from his time. So why, why do we look at pawn endgames? Well, it's my conviction that if you study pawn endgames, particularly from this composer, Gregoriev, you will learn the ability to calculate variations. You will also develop your creativity and imagination it's quite easy to find endings from Gregoriev because you can find them in many chess books, like for instance Erwin Chernev's Practical Chess Endings. When we look at this position, the first thing we need to know is the triangle. If it's right to move, which it is, and he makes a mistake and play A4 immediately, we can see the triangle by drawing a line from A4 to E8 to E4. So we have a triangle here. But as we can see, black can enter it with his king. And now he will even win the game. For instance, if white plays king F6, black will play king D5 and hinder the white king. So, the best move for white is to play king f5. Now white will try to get some cooperation with the pawn on a2 and at the same time hinder black king to enter e4. If black now, for instance, play c5, white will just play king e5 and after king e3, king d5, king d3, King c5, he will easily win the position. The best move for black here is to play king e3. And after king e5, it's natural to play king d3, but as we will see, it will lose easily. White will play king d5, and now black has a tricky move. See this check. If white knight now takes the pawn, black will immediately draw the game with king c4. Because if white play a4, black will play king b4. So the best move after c6 check is to play king c5. So it's more important to hinder the black king from enter the triangle than it is to take the enemy black pawn. After king c3, a4, black cannot play king b4, which he could play when the king was on c6. Black has a tricky move here, and that is to play c6 immediately. The idea is, if white play king d6 and black answers naturally with king d4, black will easily draw off the king c4, which is a key square for black in this variation. So, with an easy draw. After c6, White has to rush with his pawn immediately. A4. 
Black cannot rush with his pawn, as white will only play king d5. So black plays king d3, and as we saw before, king d6 is a draw now because of king c4. So white continues with his pawn. Black has to move his pawn too. a6, c4, a7, c3. And white will queen first. Now we have another tricky position. It's like a problem within the study. So, how can white win this position? There is only one solution, and I give you some thinking time. Okay, it's not so easy to solve this problem because I gave you only one minute and that is not enough for most of you. First of all, I will show you some variations which do not work here. For instance, the natural looking move, queen e for check. It is a good move if black plays king c3, which is a mistake. Now white will win easily because he will conquer the square c1. After queen e for check, black plays king d2. And now he can continue with queen d4, king e2, queen c3, king d1, and queen d3 check. This is a typical idea because now black cannot play the king to e1, so he has to play it in front of the pawn. Then white gets some time to improve the placement of his own king. But this position is a draw. I'll show you a couple of variations. For instance, if you play queen c3 check, black will answer with king b1. And after queen b3 check, black will not play king c1, because then the white wins easily with king c3. So he must play king a1. And now black cannot take the pawn on c2, because it's stalemate. So this is a draw, because black cannot move. So instead, in this position, You have an I another idea, that is to play queen e2. And now you have a little trap, because if black plays the natural looking move king b1, white will win with king c3. Black will pawn his queen with check, but white will still win, because black cannot avoid checkmate. So this is an important position to remember. But instead of king b1, black can play king a1, and the position is drawn, because this variation doesn't work now.
and the stalemate again. So that is a draw position. Another variation is to play queen d8 check. Because if black plays the king to c3, we have queen d for check and queen a1 as we saw before. And if black plays king e3, white well, will win the game with queen g5 check and then put the queen on c1. But after king e2, the game would be drawn, as we saw in the other variations. White has only one move to win this position, and that is to play queen d5 check. That is the correct solution. We don't need to look at king c3. We already know how to win with queen d for check. And if black plays king e3, white has only one move to win the game, and it's a bit tricky. I give you a couple of seconds to find it. The correct move is queen g2, exclamation mark. Black cannot queen the pawn because of queen g5 check, which wins the queen. If you don't see them with queen g2, it's very, very difficult to solve it. Better is queen e2, king e2. And how does white win this position? I'll give you a few seconds. The best move is to play queen a2. Black has only one move now, because if he plays king d3, white just play queen b2, and after king d2, he will win the necessary time for the king, because black cannot queen his pawn. So black has to play king d1. And now comes the move you must know. King d4. This is the main idea to win this position. Black cannot avoid mate. And white wins the game. I strongly recommend you to study the studies from Grigoriev. <laughs>